Hello! Today I'm going to talk about a new 360 camera that has just been announced. It's called the Rilo. I think that's, it's just called the Rilo. Um, I'm probably going to just call it the Rilo 360 camera because that makes more sense. Uh, it's yet another 360 camera that's been announced and will be released very soon, uh, before the end of the year. So yeah, uh, I'm just going to talk about what it can do, what it's designed to do, and why it's a little bit different from the other cameras that have been announced. I've also got a lot of video um, that I found on the website, their official website, to show you as well, so we can kind of see what the camera can do. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so this camera kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, it's been uh, developed by a startup company. Um, however, the executives, the CEOs behind this company worked for Apple and Instagram. And in fact, they developed, um, one of them developed the app Hyperframe, I think for Instagram, which is a really popular kind of like stabilized, stabilization app. Um, so yeah, there's kind of a lot of uh, technical pedigree behind this camera. So it's not just come out of, you know, a random startup. The guys who made this are experienced and they have a lot of experience developing software at least. So this is a 4K 360 camera that can shoot in 30 frames per second, which is kind of the same as most other 360 cameras that have come out recently. I mean, even the design is kind of like very similar to another camera, the Insta 361, just like an oblong shape with two lenses um, at the one end of the camera. So the hardware isn't really exceptional to be honest, it's kind of pretty standard. What makes this camera exceptional, at least according to the developers, the creators of the camera, is the software that powers it and the app that um, will allow you to manipulate 360 video to create normal HD video uh, in a kind of cinematic way. So this camera can shoot obviously standard 360 video um, in the format that we're used to seeing now. Um, however, it's not really designed to do that. That's not its main purpose. What it's designed to do is shoot 360 video and then allow you to manipulate that video to uh, reframe it, um, focus on one thing to create a normal uh, kind of standard HD video like you're watching now, uh, not in 360, just in a standard flat video. Now this has been done before. The Insta 361 has a similar feature, the upcoming GoPro Fusion. Uh, also allows you to do this and even the uh, Garmin Veer 360 has a similar feature basically allowing you to turn a 360 video into a normal flat video just by allowing you to control where the camera looks and basically let you kind of be a director. But what makes the Rilo different even for those cameras is that the software behind it allows apparently perfect stabilization. Um, I can show you some video here that they've released that shows the difference when the stabilization is on and off. According to them they've managed to create a stabilization software that is pretty much perfect, pretty much as good as using a gimbal or some kind of, um, you know, mechanical stabilization, something that you would have to hold. But with this, you can just hold the camera, you can run with it, you can walk with it, you can put it on a bike, on a car, and it will be perfectly smooth, which will allow you to kind of manipulate your video to create really, really smooth cinematic video um, like you're seeing right now. So it's kind of hard to explain what this kind of video is. There isn't really a name for it. I mean, the different companies call it different things. But it's basically reframing, that's what I'm going to call it. It's reframing 360 video using all of that data that's around you in a sphere and just choosing what bit of that you want to look at. So all of the creativity is basically done after you shoot. You just literally get your camera, press record, don't worry about where it's pointing, don't worry about um, what it's attached to, you can just literally record. And then after you've done shooting, after you shot the video, you can use that data to create your video. That's when you do the actual creative stuff. So the team behind this, like I say, have worked at Apple and Instagram, so they're really kind of uh, used to creating very good software, very good finished bug-free software, which is super important. That's why I'm excited about this camera, because what's let most 360 cameras down in the past is the fact that the hardware is fine, it's great, but the software is just clunky, it's not intuitive, it's not easy to use. And um, apparently these guys have really, really focused on making it as simple and easy to create these kind of stunning looking uh, th uh, videos out um, out of 360 video, uh, that's what they want to achieve. They want to make it super easy to do this. Um, so the video that they've released, I can show you some here. That um, this is what kind of the result of this this video is. This manipulating of 360 video. This is what it looks like, and I think it looks awesome. I think there is such a market for it. I think if enough people saw this, then they would want to do it. But what stops them is that it kind of seems difficult. I mean, how easy is it to create this really? Um, so the the I think the idea behind the Rilo which, I mean, this is just my opinion, this isn't what they say, but it seems to me they just want to make this as easy as possible. So those are the kind of headline features of this camera. It's the uh, kind of perfect stabilization, which they claim, and the ability to manipulate your video in this way. If that's the kind of video you want to shoot, not necessarily in 360, but you want to utilize 360 to create those kind of videos, then this seems to be a top contender to do that. I mean, like I said, it's not been released and nobody's used it yet, 
but just from the examples, it looks like it does it really well. There's hardly any stitching line that I can see. The stabilization seems to work perfectly. But like I say, this is marketing material, so we'll have to wait and see if it actually works in reality. Okay, but some of the other features it has, um, which aren't as important, which you can find on basically any other 360 camera. Obviously it can shoot photos. It can shoot photos in 6K, uh, which isn't huge, but pretty decent. Um, and I'm sure you'll be able to manipulate them in the same way as a video. It's got a micro SD slot up to 256 gigabytes. And um, I think it comes with a 16 gigabyte SD card when you buy the camera, so you don't have to worry about buying another one. Obviously, if you need more space, then just get a bigger SD card. It has a battery power of 830 mAh, which isn't that great. I mean, that's quite, quite poor really. Um, it apparently can last 60 minutes of filming, which again isn't great, but I mean if you have a, a charger with you, you know, like a portable charger, then at least you can charge it up I guess. Um, but yeah, the battery is not particularly uh, great. On it's compatible with iOS on release, so um, it's only compatible with iPhones. There's going to be a separate version uh, which connects to Android coming out in 2018, they say, so they haven't got an exact date, but at first it's only really going to work with iPhone. Another thing I should point out is that there's no uh, live streaming, there's no even a live view. This doesn't have a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connection, so you can't uh, transfer your files over via wirelessly, essentially. Um, you need to connect the camera to your phone and then transfer the uh, files like that. They say they're doing this because they don't want people to waste time on connecting, on um, like the time it takes to transfer is quite usually quite a long time. They want people to just be able to start the camera and shoot straight away, which I kind of get, but um, I think the main reason is probably because they don't want to waste even more battery power. So like I say, the software is the most important part of this camera and uh, a big part of the software is the app. So after you've done shooting your video, you connect the camera with the USB, uh, transfer your files over and then it will, and then you'll be able to um, manipulate those videos using the app, which has four separate editing modes, which allows you to, to manipulate the 360 video in a separate way. So the, so the first editing mode is called front back, which is kind of like a picture in picture image. So the first image will be a shoot shot with the lens pointing forward. So whatever is in, for, in front of you will be recorded. And then it will also record your face and put a smaller image of your face on top of that image. So it's almost like a face cam, like you get in gaming videos, uh, record your face, but put it in a smaller frame and then have the bigger frame recording in front of you. It's basically to record your reactions to whatever's happening. Second editing mode is called follow, which allows you to track um, a specific element, a specific person, and the camera will focus on that and move um, depending on where it is in the frame. So it will follow so, so for example, in this video, they're crossing a bridge and it's tracked onto the leg of a bridge and it's followed it and it kind of moves the camera to follow that uh, specific point. And because the video is so smooth, because it's stabilized, there's no shaking and it looks pretty cinematic. It looks like it's kind of done professionally. That's, that's the idea anyway. The third editing mode is called points, which is basically where you select a point where you want the camera to look. And then 10 seconds later, you might want it to look somewhere else. So you select another point and the camera will track depending on the points uh, that you selected and the times that you selected it. And lastly, it has a moving time-lapse feature, which obviously speeds up time. But I think this video looks really cool that you can see this is in action here. And uh, yeah, this is a really exciting use of time-lapse and um, this re reframing feature. So what are my first impressions of this camera? Um, obviously, I've, I now own like 11 or 12 even 360 cameras and I've used them all and I've used even more than that. So I get a pretty good idea of what, you know, these things are when they're announced just based on the specs and based on the marketing. First of all, $499 is quite expensive. It's definitely in the upper end. Uh, I mean, the video coming out of it looks amazing though. Um, these marketing videos look so smooth, so cinematic, like they keep saying. And uh, the reframing feature, the app looks to be very intuitive. And I, to be honest, I trust these guys more to make a bug-free, smooth experience because they've worked for Apple and Instagram, which are both well-renowned for making user-friendly uh, user friendly product. So um, I am excited about this camera. It is, it is slightly expensive, but I can't tell whether it's gonna be worth the money until I've actually tried it. I think if you're gonna get this camera, you're gonna be one of doing a lot of action stuff. You wanna be moving about, you're gonna be going swimming, um, cycling, climbing, uh, skydiving, all this kind of action stuff that um, you wanna record because that's what it's most gonna be used for. That's what creates the most interesting video in this um, kind of reframing 360 format. Okay, so that's about it. Um, let me know what you think of this camera, if you think it looks awesome, if you think it doesn't look awesome, if you think there's something else better or worse out there. I've posted all the specs from this camera on my website, 360cameras.com, as well as some videos. And, uh, and and as soon as I get any more information, obviously I'll share it with you. Um, I, I'm pretty excited about this camera, actually. It seems to be quite unique and it is cheaper than the GoPro. So if you wanted a cheaper version of that, then this might be a good option. 
You can order the camera now, it's available on their website to buy, but only for iPhones at the moment, so if you have an Android, you're gonna have to wait. And apparently the shipping time is two or three weeks, so that's gonna be the release date, but you can kind of pre-order it now and have it in a few weeks. Okay, so that's it, that's all I have to say on this camera. I'm gonna play back some of the example videos that I showed throughout this video, and um, so you can have one last look at what it can do. Um, but yeah, until next time, I will see you around, goodbye.